This is Jeremiah, it's J-Man Monero, J-Man Seminars with our latest episode of Millennial Who Talks, episode number 11. We're here with Philip Becker and, and Millennial Changing Lives, inspiring others with real stories from real estate agents from around the country. I just want to start with, if you're watching this and you like any bit, you hear one little nugget of information that you love and you want to share it with somebody, feel free to share this broadcast. If you know somebody that you care about enough that you want them to learn new things, tag them in the comments below. And then we have a messenger bot working for us that all you have to do is put Millenni Who, the word Millenni Who, if that's even a word, in the comments and you will be subscribed to future Millenni Who Talks broadcasts. We will not spam you in any way, shape or form. We will not ask you for any other information. So let's get started with Mr. Philip Becker from San Antonio, Texas, the great state of Texas. Actually, I have a cousin that lives there. It's really nice. Uh, so do you prefer Phil or Philip? Honestly, either way, uh, Phil is good. Let's do Phil. Okay. All right, Phil. Well, tell us a little bit about your, your story, how you started in real estate, and, and how old were you and, you know, in the beginning there was. Yeah. Sounds good. Thanks, Jay, man. I appreciate you having me uh, this morning. This is a very cool segment that you have going, and so I'm happy to be a part of it. I, uh, I'm in San Antonio, Texas, as you mentioned, and I've been a licensed realtor since 2009. So I was 23 years old uh, at the time. And currently, I have about 50 agents working for me. Uh, we're opening our second location in San Antonio, and we're an independent brokerage. So the, the short version of the long story of how I got into this business is that I've always had a passion for real estate. And it goes back to being eight years old. And on Sunday mornings, the Coldwell Banker uh, affiliate in our market would play a showcase of homes. And I mean, you got to think this was 23, 24 years ago that I first saw it. So the production quality wasn't uh, what we expect today, but I was fascinated by it and I would do it every Sunday morning. And my parents thought I was kind of weird um, because I wasn't outside or, or I wasn't doing the, the comic section of the newspaper. I was looking at the real estate stuff. And um, fast forward a little bit. I'm a really bad employee. And I just could not hold a job. I would quit or, or get fired because uh, I just have to do things my way. And so uh, after a few businesses, I started my first company at 18, which was, uh, if you've seen the 40-year-old virgin, it was kind of like that. <laughs> it was an eBay drop-off store. And okay. that progressed into web design and, and eventually um, got into playing poker with some friends and they were going to take their real estate classes. And I said, man, guys, I have nothing better to do. Let's go take the classes together. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we decided after the first class that we wouldn't be uh, good employees and we wouldn't want to work for another broker. And we found this little loophole in, in Texas where you can actually start your company from day one and not actually work under another broker as a salesperson. And um, so that's what we did. And, and when it actually happened, we had a living, breathing broker sponsor our company and then sponsor me uh, under that company. And we had an agreement, you know, for compensation. The other two guys uh, ended up getting cold feet and doing something different. And I called it Becker Properties and the rest is history. So how many, I know Texas, there's many, many hours in getting your license, right? I mean, in comparison to some other states, like New York State, we're 75 hours. How does it work if you're going to start right from the beginning as a broker? Like how many hours would that be? So let me go back to, things have changed since I got my license. At the time, it was 150 hours to become a salesperson. So five 30-hour courses. And then you needed a couple college credits not many um but if you didn't have any college credits you could take two more of the pre-licensed courses so the loophole is this and this is still a loophole that exists today and it may work in other states i'm not sure so be careful depending on what state you're from but we started an llc okay and i called it becker properties llc then i had a broker sponsor that llc for its corporate broker's license and then that LLC sponsored me as a salesperson under that. Um, so then I was able to run that LLC uh, essentially as the person in charge, even though I wasn't the living, breathing broker connected to it. And so at the time, you had to be a salesperson for two years before you could become a broker. 
And uh, now it's actually four years in a point system, but I barely snuck in after those two years and, and received my broker's license, which was in December of 2011. December of 2011, so only six years ago. Yes, sir. And, uh, I mean, it brings up a good point for anybody who might be watching who aren't great employees. It, it, it's funny that you bring that up because I'm the same way. Like I, I haven't worked for somebody since I was 19 years old. And it's like real estate is great if you want to be your own boss because it gives you that opportunity. So <clears throat> tell me some of the challenges in, in your first couple of years in business. You know, being that, you know, typically somebody might start at a brokerage and have a broker kind of walk them through the process. Here's your phone. Here's your desk. You're on your own kind of deal. <laughs> if, if there is a training, <laughs> if there is a training program. So what was that like for you? Did the person who sponsored you kind of mentor you through the process or you just kind of self-taught? And not to say that he wasn't an, a, a great person. Uh, I mean, he really gave me, you know, the opportunity that led the company to where it is today. But he was very hands off um, unless I had something that I really needed to reach out to him for, which was maybe three or four times over the two years. Uh, as long as he got his check, we, we didn't really have <laughs> too many issues. I'll, I'll tell you, though, you brought up a good point. You know, not working at another brokerage, you know, even if you're not getting, you know, the great training, which, you know, so many com companies do lack, there's at least the water cooler talks. You know, right. there's other agents in the office and I didn't have any of them to bounce things off of. So that kind of leads into YPN, um, because if I wouldn't have gotten involved with the board, I don't think I would have made it in this business at all. Just because I wouldn't have had anyone to bounce things off of it and learn from. OK, well, then let's <clears throat> let's start with I'm reading your extensive resume because you didn't waste any time in the business. First year, rookie of the year for San Antonio, right? Yes, sir. And then did you immediately get involved with the board at the local level or what was that like, like getting? So in, uh, again, I got my license in November of 2009 and they were going to launch our YPN um, network in January of 2010. So of course I hadn't sold anything. I hadn't even done a rental. I mean, I'm literally bleeding the little bit of money that I had. And, uh, I said, you know what, I'm going to go, I'm going to go put my name in for chair of this committee. And I went and I interviewed and um, it's funny. One of my mentors li likes to tell me I wasn't wearing a tie, which is why I didn't get the, get the position, but I didn't get it. Um, I did get vice chair. And so I always kid that there must've only been two people that interviewed, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I did get vice chair. And so that opportunity is so quick in the business uh, I was like, man, now you've got to step up. Now you've got to at least fake it till you make it. And right. in January, we had our kickoff event, and Shannon King, who was the current uh, NAR YPN chair at the time, came down and, and spoke to us. And, uh, man, if she didn't motivate me because I was like, that's who I want to be. I want to be successful like her, and I, I want to be chair of this this network on the national level. And that that became my goal. Okay, so you said YPN was critical in helping you through those first couple of years. What's what's that for those who you know? There's going to be new agents watching this who are like, first of all, what's YPN, right? Young Professionals Network. If you don't have a local chapter, go to the state level. The state will help you set up. If this you don't have a state one, then go to the national. Kind of work up the tiers. Could you maybe help us through that in case they don't have one locally and they really want one? Absolutely. And what's really cool is um, the YPN advisory board this year at the national level has, they're working on, I think they may be launching already a new website. Um, if you Google YPN Realtor, their YPN lounge will come up and that website not only shows you every network across the country, local and state, but there's a great uh, toolkit there that you can download if you're interested in starting a network at your local or state chap uh, state association. So for me, uh, and I'll back up, YPN is, of course, the Young Professionals Network. It is realtors only. And um, our local network in San Antonio, when we first launched, we had about 20 members that were really active. And that ranged from people like me who are brand new to people that had been in over 10 years, but were still young minded or, you know, honestly, many of them pretty young themselves. Some that started when they were 18, you know, in the business. 
So it, it, it's just a it's a way to network. It's a way to get better education and professional development, as well as there's a lot of there's a philanthropic aspect to it as well. And so, for, again, for me, just kind of being around those people um, motivated me. And and as I made a little bit of money in real estate, I'm not talking a lot. I'm talking my first two closings. Um, I reinvested so much of that money back into myself and my business. And I chose to go to the National Realtors Convention, you know, again, because I, I wasn't with a franchise. So I wasn't able to go to Remax, Texas or KW's Family Reunion or uh, Gen Blue or any of those other things. Right. So having this aspect of NAR and this big opportunity to meet people from across the country really appealed to me. And when I went to that for the first time, my network just exploded with new people. And that's what really motivated me and what's kind of led me to um, to stay involved and to follow some of these people and, and kind of emulate some of the things that they've done that have been successful. So I'm glad you mentioned that because I think sometimes it could be intimidating. You know, if you're your newer agent or younger agent and you're going to these to these functions in the state and national level and you don't know anybody. And so for anybody watching this right now, if you reached out to anybody anybody within the national association of realtors ypn they're more than willing to help you to guide you to tell you where to go i mean you can you know send a message to to phil he'd be happy to say look here's a good you know go to these events obviously go to the ypn events but help you network in business because that's what it's all about and helping each other i think i haven't met a ypner yet and i've been in the business 13 years that isn't willing to help another one, regardless of whether you're in the same market, you know, or across the country, which is really great. And, and you, you, you broke up a little bit on that last question, uh, Jay, man. I don't know if you could repeat that question. Well, I was just saying that <clears throat> I haven't met a YPNer yet that isn't willing to help another agent, regardless of whether they're in the same market, same state, or anywhere across the country. I mean, with technology, there's no reason why I can't bounce things off of you in San Antonio, Texas, and I'm in upstate New York, you know, at any point. Would you agree? Has that been or, your experience? Still breaking up? So uh, I, I think it may have been a question relating to marketing. I don't know if it's on my end uh, or yours, but it, it, you are breaking up just a little bit, J-Man. If you want to type the question in Facebook Messenger too, I'll, I'll respond that way. Um, but I guess uh, it, 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 in the absence of being able to hear that, um, I guess I can talk a little bit about kind of what we've done and, and some of the things we've emulated um, back in February of 2011. So coming up now on seven years, we decided that video was something that was um, going to be more prominent in our industry. And that really wasn't adopted, especially in our market. And that's another great point of getting involved. I saw people in other markets doing a really good job with it. And I said, nobody in my market is, is doing this. So um, what we did is we started doing in-house videos. We said, we're, we're going to start with, uh, we actually hired a, a friend of mine that I used to work with right out of college. And we started, at, I want to say Jake started at $12 an hour when he first started. And we said, look, we're going to video every single listing that we have. And I'll tell you guys, we didn't have a ton of equipment. We didn't have um, a lot of experience, but we just started doing it. And if you go back on my YouTube channel, uh, which we can share the link and, and look at some of the first ones, they were awful. And um, they've definitely come a long way since then. But in, in addition to just doing the, the listing videos, we've also done different things such as Margarita Monday, which is a social object. We've done community guide videos. Uh, client testimonials, those have really, really gone a long way because G Google says that 1.8 million words is equal to one minute of video. 
And when you can reach people with that, we, we thought it was just it was just huge. So that's one thing kind of that set us apart and kind of helped bring agents into our office. That and a training program and, and mentorship program. And hopefully we have a better connection now, uh, J-Man. And if not, we can type in the Facebook thing. And I'm sorry, guys. I I, uh, I just can't hear him on here now. So All I'm right, going wait. to go. With, How about? Uh, there you are. How about now? Okay. Yeah. So troubleshooting on the fly with Facebook Live is an exciting experience for those of you who have never attempted it. But I figured out that my uh, my eight year old son is here in the office with me, or seven year old son today, and he's streaming live video on his iPad, which affects bandwidth quality. But hopefully we have that. <laughs> we, <laughs> yeah, they got to love, got to love the children. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I think that's handled. Let's talk a little bit about getting involved with leadership on your your local board director, youngest in the history. Is that right? <laughs> Phil, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, it's it's kind of cutting out. You mentioned uh, getting involved with board leadership. You wanted to hear a little bit about that. Yes. What was okay, your path? Perfect, your, your path to leadership and and some of the challenges along the way. Absolutely, good, great question. So uh, after you know becoming the, the vice chair uh, of the YPN locally, um, it, it wasn't. I want to say it's not an automatic that you move up to chair, but it's one of those things. If you don't mess up, you're going to move up. So I had two years where, where I was really closely involved uh, with the leadership. And since we were a new committee uh, at the board, there was a lot of people that wanted to give us pushback and wanted to try to, I'm going to say stifle um, some of our progress. And, you know, I think sometimes when you're younger, it makes it even harder. Uh, and I think some of the barriers are self-imposed, but I definitely think you have to show up even more and, and even earlier and, and really make it clear that you're here to stay. And that was one of the biggest challenges is just um, showing up every day, even when they said, no, you can't do this, or we think this is a bad idea, or this event is going to fail, or we've never done it before. It's like, hey, give us an opportunity and let us show you how we can add more value to what your board is doing. And I'm, I mean, I'm so proud to say that it's come so far. I mean, one of my agents uh, will be the vice chair of YPN next year. And it's just great to see, you know, what that group has done. And, you know, I, I will, I got to give our board credit here. It may have taken them a couple of years to really, um, you know, really take us in and really love us. But now you see so many people come up through the ranks of YPN that are now, you know, for instance, the 2017 chairman of the board uh, in San Antonio, Yvette Allen. She was my chairman of YPN when I was the vice chair. Our 2018 chairman of the board was the vice chair under me in 2011 and the chair in 2012 of YPN. Um, I, I'll sit as the secretary treasurer on the executive team. So it's really cool to see that, you know, just because we kept coming and, and kept um, contributing and just really stayed involved and stayed in the know on what was going on, not just locally, but, but across the state and the nation, we gained their respect. And now we've gained a seat at the table and, and prominent seats at the table. Um, and so it's just so cool. I think about half of our board of directors uh, is YPN and we've got two people out of the six person executive committee that are 30 under 30, which is, is great. Wow, that's amazing. That's an amazing percentage of, of leaders in the in the local board. And I think it brings up a good point for those who might be in the beginning stages or the first couple of years in their local YPN. We encountered that too in our market where at first we didn't have a seat. Okay, yeah, sure, we'll give you your little committee. Just don't bother us. But like you said, when we kept showing up and showed them that, hey, we're for we're here going to be sticking around in this industry give us an opportunity and now you have so many leaders you know really taking place in your man that's huge 
huge percentage. Absolutely. So then what's it's the great. next what's the next progression? How do you go state, national, if if that's the option? Like what advice do you give to folks again to I think if they want to take that path to leadership? I think networking is is so big because you know, just like with knowledge, you don't know what you don't know. Well, the people that are in the position to you know, give you that nudge or, or put you on a committee or recommend you for something, don't know that you're interested unless you tell them. And so just by, again, not just going to these events, but going and speaking with the people that have, you know, that are the decision makers and have already moved up to the power positions and say, hey, I want to be involved and I have something of value to bring to the table and here's my information and I'm not going away. And that doesn't mean that you're going to get a position in the first year. Sometimes you have to be persistent and eventually you get it because they just know you're not going to go away. And if, if nothing else, if that gets your foot in the door, um, then I applaud that as a strategy that, that is successful. And, and, you know, even more so, it's we have this, this saying at the national level with YPN called hashtag replace yourself. And you, that's right. You always have to be looking for that next leader, and I think we all have um, uh, we all have the responsibility to to be looking for that next person to replace us, so that we can move on to other things. Because there's lots of places within the association, within our communities, within our business where we can help. And YPN is just for me was just a good uh, jump off point to get that going. Now. For those who like state and national, well, let's talk national because it seems to be a little bit more challenging to even get on committees, let alone become like your vice chair, chair of stuff. What's that process like? Who who do you tap on the shoulder? Who are the key people if somebody was looking to to go that route? You know, this is a I'm going to take this opportunity to brag on one of my friends, uh, okay. two of them. So your current uh, your 2018. Uh, president of the National Association of Realtors is Elizabeth Mendenhall. And she, this is one of her initiatives. She said, if you apply for something and you want to be involved, we are going to find a place for you. And I will tell you that an agent in my office with one year of experience went to the um, legislative meetings in DC and went to our annual conference in Chicago this year and applied for a committee, okay? And he didn't have this vast network. He, you know, he didn't know everybody, but he wasn't afraid to, do, to make the ask and to ask for recommendations. And by God, if he's not on the member communications committee uh, in 2018 with only one year in the business. So don't think, you know, anybody that, that you can't also do this. And I'll tell you, your, your leader in 2019, John Smaby, is also very forward thinking and inclusive and he sees the value in, in millennials too. So I think, you know, this year is a great opportunity to tap those guys on the shoulders and say, hey, I really want to get involved because it's it's all of our association. So you heard it here, folks. <laughs> if you want to get involved, now's the time. Don't make imaginary excuses or barriers for yourself that, oh, I went to NAR and I couldn't get on a committee because, because, because. I think what Phil and I were talking offline a lot of those barriers are imaginary, right? You want to talk about that, like you impose those on yourself and say, well, I don't have the experience. I don't have the knowledge. I don't have anything, whatever insert excuse here. It's, it's, it's imaginary. Um, you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. I mean, it, it's straightforward. I mean, I go back to what really changed my life and this is just me personally. And that was a book called the secret. And, and basically the law of attraction where your, your dominant thoughts become your reality. And that can work for, you can be any religion or you can not be religious at all. And this is just a fact of life. It's like gravity. And so for me, when I realized uh, that the law of attraction was real, I said, look, I can go out and I can, I can have what I want and I can get what I want. And instead of saying, you know, being negative and putting up those, those barriers, um, I took it the other way and I said, I'm going to do this and I'm going to stay focused and this is what I'm going to do. And, and I made vision boards and we make more vision boards all the time. And that's something, an exercise you can do every year. It's essentially you just get a, a poster board and you cut out the things that you want to achieve 
you paste them on that vision board, and then you look at that every day, and you be intentional with what it is that you'd like to do. And I can tell you, I've um, not only have I had great business success, but I've been able to purchase the properties that I want and have vacation homes and meet the woman of my dreams and, and just really build the life that I want, all because I was intentional with what it was that I want. And I took action toward that every single day instead of just sitting around and saying, oh, woe is me, I didn't get the committee. Um, so I, I think you just got to own it, right? Realtors own it. Realtors own it. I love that. And for those, go out there. Who's the author of the book, The Secret? It's by Rhonda Byrne. And that's B-Y-R-N-E. Ron Byrne. I'm just going to put this up here real fast. And it's Rhonda, R-H-O-N-D-A is her first name. It's a, really, it's a really good book. It's an audio book. It's a movie. Um, man, I know a lot of us are driving from appointment to appointment all the time. Get the audio book and listen to it in your car. Uh, it, I, I really uh, I think it can be a, a great tool. It looks like we might have a little J man on, on the video again. Let's see. Okay, so I, I'm thinking that I'm uh, solo right now. It looks like J-Man's PC crashed. So I'm just going to let you guys know. Um, we've got about three minutes left. I'm going to wrap this up just by answering the last question or two that I think he may have had for me. Um, and, and that's about finding balance. And, and also, do you, you know, do you ever feel like you're, you're overcommitted or like you've just done too much? And I will say that um, sometimes I have, I have applied for a position or, or taken on uh, a, a specific role. And I said, man, this is, this is actually going to be a lot more uh, effort th than I thought it was going to be. And it's going to take up a lot of my time. But again, you know, it comes back to scheduling. And, and that's one of the ways I found balance too. If it's not on my calendar, it doesn't exist. Uh, I, I'm really careful about, about that. And I also, I put life on the calendar first. And I think that's the most important thing when you're talking about balance because you won't come out, you won't come back from burnout. And your family uh, is the most important thing. So put life on the calendar first, let that take up some schedule block, and then put time for your business, uh, for volunteering and in your community, as well as at your associations. And um, I know J-Man's PC crashed, so I'm going to just wrap this up by saying that I really appreciate the opportunity to, to be here with y'all, and I hope you have a prosperous and joyous new year, and I hope you own it in your businesses in 2018. But in Thanks closing, for having me. I want to thank Philip Becker for being on the show today. He actually had to make his way to a listing uh, appointment video that he was had scheduled for 11 o'clock, so he had to leave right at 1030, but we are going to do a follow-up interview with Phil, because he had so much great information to share. 30 minutes just is not enough time. And we'll be sure that we won't have any bandwidth issues. And uh, the computer that likes to that likes to restart in the middle of a broadcast will be sacrificed later on <laughs> once I get my new computer. Uh, it's the second time that's done. That's pretty frustrating. But we thank you for tuning in and staying on with us. Uh, with Millennial Who Talks. Again, if you want to subscribe to the broadcast and this broadcast only, just type Millennial Who in the comments and you will be subscribed. The messenger bot will notify you. You have to reply with a yes. And if you know anybody that you care about enough to shed some a little bit of knowledge into their life, uh, please share this in any of our past broadcasts. We greatly appreciate it. And Millennial Who Talks, changing lives with real stories from real estate rock stars from across the country. So we thank you. Thanks for tuning in and have a great day.